Hey guys, it's Real Cool with Boaters List and Hollow Brinlet channels. We're here today with Peter Chai Bongsai from the Billfish Foundation. Peter, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. No, thanks for joining us. Boaters List is a proud sponsor of the Billfish Foundation. Yeah, we, we're really happy to have you guys on board as one of our conservation partners. It's fantastic. Well, one of Boaters List's passions is ocean conservation, keeping the ocean clean, making sure billfish aren't killed, making sure if maybe if they are, that they're going to scientists and... Right, yeah, no, we, we uh, our foundation is based off of the conservation of billfish worldwide, as well as the promotion of uh, the community and the industries that are dependent on those healthy fisheries. Uh, I do want to make clear, though, that that does mean we do believe in sustainable use of that resource. So uh, we do attend a lot of these, um, a lot of these events uh, like the Pensacola International that, that do harvest once in a while. Yeah, of course. It's crazy to see such huge fish, and I'm sure you get a ton of information from all the different animals and species brought in. Yeah, what's really interesting about it is, you know, billfish, while not synonymous with the general public, it's actually ingrained with, within a lot of the people. Uh, I always like to say, People don't realize they see billfish or no billfish in the back of their mind. Uh, if anyone follows baseball, one of the Florida uh, Florida Marlins or Miami Marlins now, uh, obviously Old Man in the Sea, right, with uh, Ernest Hemingway, um, and obviously a lot of uh, clothing apparel. But what's really interesting about it is that we are still consistently learning about these species. Um, and the way we learn about them is actually when uh, people harvest them once in a while. And we're not talking about... Um, hundreds of thousands of it. It's basically like one or two or three, mm -hmm. maybe. And all of those fish that are harvested are basically given to scientists to where we learn more, uh, more about them. So uh, they're not like your, your mahi or your, or your group or your snapper, right? Which you, can, which you can find a little bit more easily. These are a little bit harder to find. They're called rare event species, yeah. Of course, of course. Okay, well, before we jump into the billfish, yeah. I kind of want to know a little bit more about you. Where are you from? What yeah. do you do? Yeah, so I am from the great state of New Jersey, uh, uh, but I've lived down in South Florida for over 20 years now. Um, I studied marine science at the University of Miami and then worked abroad for a couple of years and then came back and got a graduate degree in it. And uh, yeah, I've always been really close with the ocean. Um, I had a pond uh, back when I was a kid in New Jersey and we just put night crawlers and little pieces of bread in there and seeing whatever we can catch. Uh, but then every single job that I've had since uh, since 18 has always been connected to the water somehow. So whether it's terrestrial, like on land with uh, freshwater or marine, I've always been in touch with the water. I always like being part of it. That's so cool. Can you tell me a little bit more about the Billfish Foundation? When was it founded and why? Yeah. So great question. Uh, we were founded in 1986 and basically we were founded by 40 different individuals and clubs uh, and Pensacola happens to be one of our founding members as well, which is really neat. Uh, it was founded because what I was kind of hinting to before was the fact that a lot of people love to catch these fish, right? They're considered the king of game fish, right? Queen of the ocean. Yep, right. So everyone wants to catch a blue marlin if they have the opportunity to do that. Uh, but what was really interesting is that while lots of people love to catch them, not a lot was known about them. So our foundation was solely established so the general public and science scientists could help understand, you know, very basic information from how big they get, where they go, uh, where they spawn, and so forth and so on. And we're still learning a lot today from that. Yeah, as you mentioned to me earlier, during a fishing tournament, they actually discovered a new species. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's that's a great point. So. Uh, probably about 10 to 15 years ago, uh, many people thought that we had found uh, all the all the species of billfish. But uh, through a lot of the um, fish harvested uh, during one of the tournaments up in uh, the Mid Atlantic area, uh, scientists were able to determine that what people thought were white marlin was actually a separate species called the brown scale spearfish, which wow. is really neat. So since then, they have been separated and shown to be uh, uh, different species due to physiological differences and so forth, yeah. That's really, really cool. Yeah. What does ocean conservation mean to you? Uh, it means everything. Uh, as I told you, like, uh, I've been a part of the water ever since I've had the opportunity to be it. Um, 
wouldn't be able to enjoy half the things I, I would do, <laughs> honestly. Uh, everything that I do is, is, for, is for the ocean, is for the community that's dependent on it. Um, that's why I love uh, this job. Uh, the foundation does, you know, is their core goals are based on, on that. Awesome, awesome. And so are boaters list. Yeah, no, for sure. We're very appreciative of you guys coming on board uh, this year as a conservation partner. It really shows not only to us, but everyone that is a part of Boaters List that you guys are essentially showing that conservation pays. You're basically stepping forward uh, or paying it forward kind of thing to show, hey, you know, we really believe in this stuff and we want to we want to help support those organizations like the Billfish Foundation. And we're even able to, I think we're even able to tag them. We're part of the tag and release. Yeah, so that's correct. So that's right. You guys are um, uh, one of the sponsors of our tag and release program, which we're very happy. Uh, that is our, that's our cornerstone program that we've had since 1990. And just to kind of give people a kind of cool fun fact about it is that a majority of what the general public or science knows about Billfish comes from tagging programs like ours. And we have over, I think, nearly 200,000 records since 1990. Wow. Yeah, worldwide, mostly in the mostly in the Western Hemisphere, but all comes from recreational fishermen. Um, or I'd say 99% comes from recreational fishermen. And that's a testament to this community, you know, the water watermen, uh, or the people that love the water, their commitment to conservation, just like you guys. Of course. So it's a really good uh, mesh of uh, core values. How do you become a member or supporter of the Billfish Foundation? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So there are lots of easy ways. Um, you can just go on to our website, billfish.org, um, and you can just sign up right there. Our base membership is about $50 a year, um, and it goes up from there. Uh, and just to kind of think about it, in a very easy sense, it's 14 cents a day uh, to help support conservation, which is nothing. Uh, so, and that goes to Help, our, help support our programs. Um, you could also find us at a lot of these events uh, throughout the Gulf and throughout the East Coast. Um, you can always ask us on how to join as well. And if maybe they don't have that kind of money, is there any way or any small things they can do that would have an impact? Yeah, I mean, the easiest thing to do is what I like to say, become an evangelical, right? So just be able to understand the topics that we are, um, that we're supporting and that we're trying to achieve uh, the goals we're trying to achieve and let their friends know if they can't if you can't join maybe your friend can and yeah. just conversations between between uh fishing buddies or between people on the water that that's very helpful as well awesome cool and what type I, i'm curious what kind of scientific data comes out of some of these marlin that are brought into to get weighed at these tournaments oh that's a great one so as we mentioned before you know we were able to find a new species right uh but what, what they can find is um, they'll look at what they've actually eaten. Uh, they'll see how old they are. Uh, funny enough, we're still learning uh, just the very basics of um, billfish, just because there's not a lot of funding out there for it. Uh, fortunately, unfortunately, TBF is one of the largest private supporters of billfish research. Um, so we're always learning. Uh, we're looking at you know, where they're potentially spawning, right? So we're looking at their gonads. Um, we're looking at, you know, where they're migrating to, you know, if they have a tag in it, right? Like mm -hmm. we're looking to see if it went from, you know, from Montauk, New York, New York, all the way down to La Guerra in Venezuela, right? So stuff like that is super helpful for science and scientists. Of course. And I mean, has, besides that new, new identified species, has there any been any other significant breakthroughs to come off of from one of these offshore tournaments? Sure. So kind of on a on a on the same type of wavelength, what's really been interesting is being able to demonstrate to local governments or states to show how much money goes into these, uh, because lots of people are flying from all over the place to go fishing. Mm -hmm. Right. And what we've been able to do, as well as some of these other tournaments, is actually demonstrate how much money you're willing to spend to come down. It's not just renting a charter boat. Right. You yes. flying down getting a taxi or an Uber, right? And then you're getting a hotel room, then you're going to the bars and you're, you know, you're getting all this other stuff. And that's all part of the fishing experience or part of the trips mm -hmm. that when it comes to this stuff, not to mention the fuel and the bait and all that other stuff that yeah. goes along with it, right? So that's a lot of the stuff that we can present to, that makes it easier, I should say, for someone in government. They can see dollar signs a lot easier sometimes than they can see, 
you know, uh, a graph of some sorts. <laughs> yeah, so these offshore tournaments are having a huge impact on tons of local communities all over the Gulf and every shoreline in the United States. Yeah, I would say globally. So, yeah, I mean, if you go to any of these tournaments, uh, you can see all these big boats come in. They're spending lots of money on all these different things. But then, you know, even if you look internationally, uh, you know, we've done a bunch of these socioeconomic reports to demonstrate that, you know, and one example uh, for for Los Cabos, where Cabo St. Lucas is, we were able to demonstrate nearly 15 years ago that $1.25 billion came from sport fishing. Wow. Which was shocking, not only to them, but I think to everybody else, right? That's crazy. That how dependent one local area is on uh, on sport fishing, on, on people like us, on people that like to recreate in the water. Um, and I think a lot of times, a lot of people don't understand that there's a lot of monetary power behind everyone, you know, clients of Boaters List or, you know, recreational fishermen that we're spending a lot of money. So you want to be able to promote that infrastructure better because the better that that area does, then it can grow and grow and grow and be better for that local community as well. Of course. I, I, I could not agree more. How do you think the Billfish Foundation and Boaters List go hand in hand? Well, I think it's just that very <laughs> that very same topic. Yeah, you got it, right? So, uh, so you kind of spoon fed me right there. So I think it's that to where understanding that your clients and our constituents are essentially the same people, right? We are watermen. We love the water. We want to recreate in the water. Yep. Um, and but there's that side as well that we want to be able to enjoy that for a long period of time, and that's why I think. Um, Having you guys support the Tag and Leash program is fantastic. It shows your dedication and your support. But then it also shows your clients as well that, hey, they're putting with their money where their mouth is. And I think that's why it, we work out really well. It matters. And it, we want everybody to know that. Right. And we want all of Boaters List followers and supporters to, to do the same. Right. I mean, it's like it's like going up stand-up paddleboarding and you know seeing those dolphins that literally just popped up right behind you. Right. People want to see that stuff when they're out on the water. It's it's peaceful to be out on the water. But your experience is enhanced by the experiences that you have out on the water. Of course. And Boaters List allows that to happen. Right. You give Boaters List has that ability to direct you to the right person for this service for that. And I like to think that works out with TBF as well or the Billfish Foundation, because we feel the same way. We want to be able to, you know, you, you go out and catch your first marlin or to even see your first marlin. Because for a lot of these people, uh, the general public, they've never seen one before. Um, and there's a lot of there's a lot of good that can come out of that, if that makes sense. Of course. I, I personally saw my first Marlin this summer. And when I saw it, I, I was like, wow. <laughs> if you understand that there are different aspects of how that fish is going to be used, like legitimately, if it's a large fish, we have our scientists go or we, have, we know scientists that will actually collect all those hard parts look at every single piece on how how we can actually learn more from those species and like i said you know our scientists or scientists have learned to discover new species but they are constantly learning these things and constantly publishing scientific publications which is the basis of a lot of policy as well right and that's the that's essentially the ends to a means right mm -hmm. a means to an end excuse me that's what i'm trying to say so how do we learn more about tbs so once again you can go to our website uh, billfish.org or you can go to um, basically all of the social media, whether it's Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or even LinkedIn. What's y'all's uh, tag? Uh, it's the Billfish Foundation. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel, which is Fish TBF okay. on there as well. Uh, so there are many different ways uh, to find us. And basically, it'll tell you uh, the latest news or like how to tag and all that information. Um, but uh, yeah, those are just some, some really easy ways to find us and learn more about some of the issues at hand. Awesome, guys. Y'all make sure to follow the Billfish Foundation and show your support. So what do you think of our new Boaters List app? I love it. Uh, it's really intuitive. It's really simple. I love the search engine up, uh, uh, up there. It makes it really easy. If I'm Like I said, if I want to look for uh, someone to help service my boat or help find a charter or help find you know something else, uh, you guys have made it really easy, <laughs> to well, say the least. Yeah. Good. Peter, thank you so much for joining us today and your all your efforts towards saving the billfish. It's been an honor. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, and we appreciate your support. Of Brian. course, always. Yeah, thank you.
Guys, make sure to check us out at voterslist.com and voterslist and Espanol on Instagram, as well as Bad Idea Voting and Hallover Inlet. I'll see y'all on the water. Voters List. Better, Better on, on the, the water. water.